In this video, we're going to take a look at a shimmering turquoise ink by Dymine Tropical Glow. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the turquoise playlist, so if you wanted to find more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. Lot o shimmer. We have no feather, no spread. We do get shading in some of the writing, and I'm not always sure that we, it comes through on camera while I'm filming, only in editing. We get it a little bit in the medium. We get spots of it that occur in the extra fine, so to have an idea of how I'm looking at this differently than you guys, is if the camera is straight above the table, but I'm looking at it at a much different angle, and the lighting set up so that the camera can see it better with less of that shimmer, so I'm hoping it works out. Now, for tone variation, the stub and the extra fine are the same tone, while the medium looks, in general, slightly darker. The extra fine took 8 seconds to dry, and the medium took 15. Scrubby for both show color variation. We are getting it in the writing, though, much better in the medium, and a smear test you could probably recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Levenger True Writer with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding and no ghosting. Still, it just looks much lighter on camera than person because you are still getting some of that reflection. We have no feather, no spread, no tone variation in the writing, and no tone variation in the uh, actual writing of itself. So we have no shading, and they're all the same tone. The extra fine took 14 seconds to dry, and the medium 22. Scrubby for both are showing a little color variation, but it is not really here. Where we see spots of it that it looks like it is on camera, that's really where there's a little less shimmer. The smear test says you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, it's immediately put into water. 10 to 15 seconds is how long I keep it there. We see the line of shimmer on the bottom, but then what we see is this is truly a turquoise dye. All of it is fleeing from the water, gathering at the top. The one on the right that's let dry for 10 minutes, it looks exactly the same. So we're not expecting any kind of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia Dot Pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, no spread, no shading for the stub. Only a couple of spots of shading show up for the extra fine. The medium actually does better for shading, where brown goes darker to lighter and fox goes lighter to darker. Quick is very dark is a word, especially compared to the. The extra fine is much lighter than the medium as a general tone, stubs the same tone as the extra fine. The extra fine took 10 seconds to dry in a medium 18. Scrubby for both, well, the, the extra fine shows some color variation, the medium shows none. It does show up in the writing, but largely hidden by the shimmer, which is what you're using this ink for. The smear test says you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, there's a bit of blowout that's occurring, and it's not like it's unreadable, I'm just risk averse. So I would not use it in a note-taking situation if I needed to go back and highlight. Seeing the picture, you see how difficult this is on the camera to photograph because of the shimmer. Water is completely removing this ink. It's not all gone yet in the in this smear test, but it will all go away with just a little more time. Pen flush does everything that water does, which is the reason it only took water to get it out of my pen. And the one-third bleach solution that you are not going to need obliterates it. The next writing sample is done on G. Lalo paper. 
no bleeding and no ghosting. It's a much more absorbent paper, so the shimmer doesn't show through as well, but the gray does sort of, I, I, it, I want to call it mask it. It's, this is too light a tone for a toned paper like this. We have no feather, no spread. We get a couple spots of tone vary, of shading in the extra fine, none in the stub. We get little spots of it in the medium. Now the medium comes across much darker than everything else where the extra fine and, and stub are the same tone. The extra fine took nine seconds to dry and the medium 11. Scrubby for both aren't really giving us tone variation. The extra fine, that which we're, when I'm looking at the camera screen, that's shimmer. That's not tone variation. And the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diamine's Tropical Glow has a viscosity of 1.77, so it's a wet ink to handle all this shimmer. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests are done, then down in the description, link to that video. Go ahead and check it out. Now, let's take a look at Apica paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. No feather, no spread, no shading for the stub, extra fine or medium. And the extra fine's coming in a little bit darker than the, or sorry, the medium's coming in a little darker than the extra fine or stub, which are the same tone. Extra fine took seven seconds to dry and a medium took 10. Now the scrubby of the extra fine showing some color variation. So is the medium far left to far right, but it's really not coming through in the writing samples. And the smear test you probably could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine's Tropical Glow has an average dry time of 15 seconds, so it's normal. The last writing sample is done on Franklin Christoph paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. Again, it tends to be a little bit more of an absorbent ink, so it's going to handle some of that shimmer a little bit differently. Now, we have no feathering, no spread. We get no shading in the stub, but we do see shade difference in the extra fine, where quick is much darker than over. In the medium, we do see shading because brown goes darker to lighter to darker. The medium is lighter than the extra fine and the extra fine's lighter than the stub. This has been the strangest per, uh, performance for this ink. The extra fine took seven seconds to dry and a medium 10. The scrubby for both do show some color variation and it is there in the writing and the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Diamine's Tropical Glow, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I needed something that went with both the turquoise and that silver shimmer, so I chose a magenta by Krishna, their Granat. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Diamine's Shimmering Ink Tropical Glow? This is the water on the west coast of Florida on a summer day. Yep. No class or kids, none of it. Shades well and has something special about it. That something special sparkles that work. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? Yes, a broad wet pen, but I'm really thinking of deepening the channel on a Noodler's Ahab so that I can put a fine pen and get very fine writing with that shimmer. I just think that would be very interesting for this ink. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at KWZ's Baltic Memories.